In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right tent of the Father. Receive our prayer. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest. Gloria, Gloria, and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the never-failing providence orders all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly implore you to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the seventh Sunday after Trinity is written in the first book of Moses, known as Genesis, chapter 2. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees, grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first was the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Jihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory be to you, O <clears throat> During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples, to set before the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were present. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The last Sunday service that we held this spring before everything got shut down was the fourth Sunday in Lent. The gospel that Sunday was Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 in John chapter 6. Similar, but a different event from the event we heard this morning, the feeding of the 4,000. Back on that Sunday, when we were looking ahead to great uncertainty, and who had any idea that we'd still be in it, On that Sunday, we heard that Jesus, when when a bodily danger posed a threat to the crowds who followed him, Jesus asked his disciples where they would buy bread for all these people to eat. We heard, he said this to test them, for he already knew what he would do. Indeed. He has tested us in all kinds of ways. But still through all of this, in fact, it is true, Jesus has known all along what he would do. Today we're in a similar boat. There's a danger somewhere, but unseen, And no matter what numbers, what models you look at, no matter which people you listen to or read, it is uncertain how much danger any are in, how susceptible, how at risk, how dangerous it is. It's like we are all hyper aware of the danger, but don't really know where the danger is. Jesus looked at this other crowd who had gathered, who were still unaware of a danger that that, uh, gathering posed a danger to them. And Jesus said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. Maybe that sounds something like what you've been hearing since Lent. If we don't do this, bad things will happen and people will die. Or if we all just do this, then people won't die and we can beat it. If this, then this. Because science says. But as you know, many of the things didn't turn out that way. We did some things and we didn't do some things. We worried some. Maybe we worried a lot. We grew frustrated, grew impatient, grew angry even. The thing is, we don't even need the experts to tell us what what might happen to us, what dangerous thing might happen to us. Our minds will make up their scenarios, their own scenarios, of all kinds of bad things that might happen to us. If we. If we don't watch our diet. If we don't make enough money. If we don't keep an eye on our children. or, Or if the doctors don't catch it in time. If we're not careful then, then what? In our minds, together with help from the experts, we'll dream up everything bad that can happen and play out the worst possible conclusion, usually while we're trying to sleep. And even though as time passes, we realize that most of the things that we fretted about and worried about didn't happen. And still we worry about tomorrow. Meanwhile, Jesus sees the crowd. Jesus looks out and he sees and he knows, he knows exactly what will happen. 
He alone knows what will happen if we do this or if we don't do this. For Jesus says, if I send them away hungry, they will faint on the way. And because he knew exactly what danger they were in, because he knew what would happen, he acted. He fed them. Without their knowledge of how bad the danger was, he averted the danger that was most certainly headed toward them. I guess the question for us is whether we trust Jesus to do the same for us. See, unless we have a promise from him, we cannot say or know that he will do some miracle to immediately remove all risk of danger from us. He could. It would be most certainly possible for him, and he has done that in the past. We've heard that. We could pray for it, but he hasn't promised. And so we don't rely on that. We don't rely on the fact that if we, if we don't take every precaution that we won't somehow be hurt. So we won't rely on a possibility. No, this, this is what we will rely on. The compassion that our Jesus has for us. As he had on the cross. See, not only does Jesus know what might or will harm us, not only does he have all the power in the world and heaven and earth to end them if he wishes, but our Jesus has compassion on us. The word compassion means to suffer with. And the actual word that Jesus uses in, in Greeks refers to this. It's a, it's a kind of gut-wrenching, compassionate, suffering care for the suffering. And we know that he has this for us. For in his incarnation, Jesus entered into our human flesh so that he could carry all our sorrows, all our diseases, all of the things that would harm us would harm him. All of the diseases that might kill us might have killed him. Jesus had compassion on the crowds in part because he suffered with them. And more than that, he suffered for them. See, he carried even more. More than their diseases and sorrows, also their sins and iniquities. He carried, he bare, bore the weight of their doubt, their fear, worry, lack of trust, their pride, and their carelessness. Those things, along with those things that St. Paul mentions in our epistle, those things lead to death. Sin leads to death, for sure. And Jesus came into our flesh, had compassion on us, and carried them. My dear friends, he has carried all yours as well. Your sins, your iniquities, your sorrows, your sicknesses, your death. He has carried them to this cross and buried them in his grave. Because he has suffered with you, has compassion on you, you need not carry this weight alone. You need not worry about what might happen. If we do this or don't do this, Jesus knows, and he has compassion on you, so that you may, in fact,
cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Amen. Please stand. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Remember, Lord, your promise to be a rock of refuge for your baptized children. Be gracious to us. Create in us humble and contrite hearts that we might always cry out to you for mercy. Fill us with your love. Grant us renewal by your Holy Spirit that we may always abide in Jesus Christ, our Savior beholding his glory in his holy word and sacraments, 
and being made well by the same. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, your promise to send workers into your vineyard. Remember those whom you have already sent. Make your face shine on them so that through their faithful service, the eyes of those blind to your mercies may be opened to see their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, our nation and its leaders. Guide them in the direction you would have them go, that peace and prosperity, truth and justice, religion and piety may dwell in our land. Remember also those who serve in our armed forces, that they would serve with integrity and honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, the elderly and shut-in. Provide them with compassionate and loving caregivers and bless the nursing homes throughout our land. Send pastors to bring them Christ through his holy word and sacraments and sustain those who remain isolated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, those who are sick, hospitalized, in treatment, undergoing surgery or recovering, and all who are in need. Comfort them with your presence, strengthen their faith through your gracious promises, and bring healing to them as you will and know to be best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, your servants, Jesse and Janessa Tim, who were united in holy marriage yesterday. Grant that their life together may be blessed with wisdom, purity, self-sacrifice, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, those who come to the holy altar this day to receive the medicine of immortality in the Holy Eucharist. Fill all who partake of your Son's very body and blood with his life and love, that they may depart in his peace, which surpasses all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, your promise to fill the wedding banquet of your Son and his bride, the Church, with guests clad in white robes. For those who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, we give you thanks and praise. Bring us with them to the day of our Lord's glorious return, that we may all receive the eternal inheritance you have prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, you have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You lifted Noah and his family in the ark. You promised to bless all nations through Abraham. You delivered Moses and the Israelites. You renewed your promises through the prophets. And now you have spoken through your Son, 
who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will. In your tender mercy, you gave him your one and only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. By the one offering of himself, he made there a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Father, remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We humbly thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation through your Son's own body and blood, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.